All right, and good morning to all of you that are watching by way of Rumble. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, we're coming to you live here from the auditorium, uh, the West Marion Baptist Church here in Marion County, uh, the great all-American city of Ocala. And God bless you, and thanks for tuning in with us. And we're studying uh, this month of November uh, subjects and topics on Thanksgiving, giving thanks, being thankful, grateful, having an attitude of gratitude, of attitude of gratitude, and so forth. And so we're going to continue that uh, today, and then that will be getting into the Christmas season starting next week. So we'll be glad to have you tune in with us as we start into the Christmas season. So this morning's our last in our uh, series of Thanksgiving and giving thanks and being thankful. So I hope you clicked on the link and download the study guide. If not, get your pen and pencil out and open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. We've already read this verse several times this month and looked at it once or twice in some of our uh, teaching that we've had, but we're going to uh, take again. This is our text verse that we're using. Uh, very simple, very easy. Uh, everyone ought to put it to memory and to memorize it. And so everybody there in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. But we're going to be again reading in verse number 15. We're going to read verses 15 through 24. All right, 15 through 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Everybody have your outline and so forth ready to go. So everybody in 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5 and verse 15. Let's have prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Bless our time. Thank you for the rain. Uh, we certainly need it. Yeah, we got a little wet, but that's all right. Praise the Lord. And uh, our grass and plants and everything need it. So thank you for the rain. Thank you for getting us here safely and keeping us safe. And uh, thank you for a wonderful week and a wonderful Thursday that I'm sure that most everyone here had a wonderful time of Thanksgiving, of giving thanks, and trust they remembered you in uh, their time of giving thanks. And wonderful meals we had and fellowship we had. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. And thank you we have a country that sets aside on the calendar a scheduled day at least once a year for our country to pause and give thanks to Almighty God. So we thank you for that, and Lord, we want to praise you for that. Now bless our time in your word now. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and our guide. We ask that he would give us illumination, understanding, and by all means wisdom to apply the understanding that we're going to gain today as we take a look at living always with a thankful heart. So Lord, help us to always have a thankful heart in everything. And that's something we can really put to practice. And so we thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Begin reading in verse number 15. Paul uh, writing here to the church of Thessalonica, to the believers here. And by the way, Th Thessalonica was considered the model church of the New Testament. And this was a church that uh, everyone patterned themselves after in the New Testament. And so we come to verse 15, and Paul said, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. That's a present imperative command, by the way. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. By the way, all of these are present imperative commands starting in verse 16. All right. Verse 20. Despise not prophesying. And that, that's teaching, biblical teaching and prophecy. There's a lot of people that, that mock prophecy today. And there's a lot of people that don't teach it. There's a lot of churches that don't even touch it, won't touch it, and uh, so forth. But we're not to despise it. We're, we're to teach it. 25% of the Bible is prophecy. Okay, you understand that? 25% of the Word of God is prophecy. And we are not to despise prophesyings and so forth. And yet there are so many who do. And then it says, prove all things. That's, these are all biblical commands, by the way. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You notice the Bible didn't say abstain from evil. It said all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil were to abstain from. Okay, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless, watch again, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, 
who also will do it. And then in verse 25, he says, Brethren, pray for us. And so our text verse is verse 18. In everything, give thanks. What? In everything. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today because we're talking about living always with a thankful heart. How good did you live this week with a thankful heart? You see, did you have some ups and downs and mumbling and grumbling and disgruntled and, and so forth and weren't so thankful about some things, the way they happened, turned out, whatever? I mean, you know, you were expecting this big turkey and you ended up having a little hen on your plate. Were you thankful for the hen? Well, you wanted 10 ounces of turkey and you only got four. Were you thankful for the four ounces? You had the cranberry relish instead of cranberry sauce. I mean, I don't mind both, but my preference is the big round ones in the can, the sauce, and slice it up and munch out, man. You thank the Lord that uh, uh, whatever happened this week, whatever you went through, whatever went down, we're to give thanks in everything. So we're going to take a look at it. First of all, notice with me as we take a look at this, living always with a thankful heart. We're to be living always with a thankful heart. And if we're honest, sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? We get disgruntled, we get dissatisfied, we get upset. Uh, things don't go the way we'd planned or wanted them to. And we find ourselves not being thankful. And yet we're commanded to be living always with a thankful heart. And so uh, I trust we'll work on that, especially this season, not just for the month of November, and certainly not just for November 24th or 5th, whenever Thanksgiving. You know, because our country set that date aside for our country and put it on the calendar as a national holiday of a national day of giving thanksgiving unto God for his provisions and for our country and how we've been blessed and everything. But hey, church, as believers, we, we ought not wait till November. I mean, just Thanksgiving was over Thursday. Let's not, by, by all means, let's not wait. This is what, Friday, Saturday, three. So let's not wait another 363 days before we start giving God thanks again. I mean, you know what? So first of all, I want you to notice the command for thanksgiving. The command for thanksgiving. And I want you to notice that it is to be continual. This command for thanksgiving is to be continual. And what did the verse say? In everything give thanks. It's to be continual, not just on Thursday of November, but every day we're commanded to give thanks in everything. It's to be continual. Listen to what Psalms 146, 2 says. While I live, how many of you are living today? Amen. I see most of you are breathing, and uh, you got here, and some of you have smiles on your faces, some of you have frowns, some of you are wiping your eyes, and you know, still trying to get to sleep out. I understand. All right. But while I live, what will I do? Will I praise the Lord? Now, notice when it says, will I live, I praise the Lord. See, if you take the will out, then it no longer becomes your will. See, it's, it's got to become your will to praise the Lord. You have to will your praise. It's a choice, church. We can choose to, 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 to praise the Lord or choose not to. But it's a matter of the will. It's not a matter of choice. And so it's a matter of the will. While I live, will I praise the Lord? Then notice again, the psalmist says, I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. In other words, while I'm living, while I have any breath where I'm living, he, he, again, he says, I will. He makes, a, he makes a determination. He makes a will in his heart and mind that he's going to praise the Lord while he has breath. That's why the scripture says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And so we need to praise the Lord. And by the way, now let's take a look at that. We're talking about here. So we have a command, and this command of thanksgiving is to be continual. Well, let me share with you two ways we can give thanks continually. Two ways that we can give thanks continually. Number one, with our lips. With our lips. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Church, talk to me. Class, circle or underline the next word. Continually. And then notice, that is, what? The fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. 
So this command for thanksgiving is not an option. It's not a, a whether you want to or not. It's a biblical command. And if we're going to be obedient, then we're to do it continually. Well, how do I do that? Well, the first way you can do it is with your mouth. Let there be continual praise from your lips. Now, how often do we hear that? How often do you hear when you're around believers just going around, praise the Lord? I praise the Lord for this. I praise the Lord for that. Oh, praise the Lord, it's raining. Praise the Lord, I got a flat tire. Praise the Lord, the car didn't start last night. You know, praise the Lord this. Praise the Lord that. No, we don't. What do we do? I don't know what's wrong with this thing. I thought I fixed it. I kick it, kick it. I mean, wait, what happened to the praise? <laughs> what happened to the giving of thanks? And, and, you know, we're all guilty of that, of course. And so we, But we have to work on it. And, and now that we hear it from the Word of God, uh, we're responsible for what we hear. We're accountable to what we hear. Uh, Charles Spurgeon said this, When we bless God for mercies, we usually prolong them. When we bless God for miseries, we usually end them. There might be a way to start ending some of your aches and pains or whatever you're going through by praising God and giving thanks for it. Praise is the honey of life which a devout heart extracts from every bloom of providence. That's God's provincial care, providential care, providence, and grace. And so with our lips, we need to praise the Lord. There are so many other verses with that. Uh, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Uh, we ought to be continually uh, with our lips having praise from our lips, but yet... Even when we're in conversations with our friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, family and everything, how much do you hear praising the Lord? You know, we're, we're so talking about everything else and everything else that's gone on and everything else that's happened and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'm I just thinking about that myself here right now. To give an example, uh, you know, with preparing for this. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner, I'm sitting there and we're at the table and uh, we had 14 at our table and... Uh, Next to me was uh, uh, some of my in-laws, not outlaws, but in-laws, and uh, we got into a conversation, uh, Brother Tim and I, and my father-in-law, and uh, one of them, uh, and we got into a conversation about insurance, and all we did was fuss about how much insurance was costing. Here we are sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner table. We just got through having prayer, giving thanks, and thanking God for this wonderful meal set before us, and boy, did we have a feast. We had enough food to feed three armies, and uh, you know, the only thing we didn't have, uh, you know, we did have turkey, we had spiral ham and, and all that good stuff, but, you know, I didn't have any deep-fried turkey, and I didn't have any uh, smoked turkey, so I'm hoping and expecting to have some of that tonight, and so amen, praise the Lord, I've been looking forward to that, uh, just dropping a little hint here and there, so amen, praise God, but I didn't have any of that, but, you know, here we're having this great meal. Kids are all there. Uh, we had fun teasing the newlyweds, though. That was fun. Uh, we adults got on the, the newlyweds. So, oh, we got the newlyweds are with us today. Praise the Lord. And that we did praise the Lord for, okay? <laughs> and uh, then we said, how long y'all been married now? Three weeks? Or, no, maybe about four or something. I said, you already forgot? And, 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 and then one of them says, y'all are still married? And they go, yeah, 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 we're still married. And one of them says, you all still in love? And, and Caden goes, oh, yeah, man, we're still on the honeymoon. Praise God. And I said, but are you still talking to each other? He goes, oh, yeah, we're having lots of conversations. And so we were having fun with them. You know, they're just kids. <laughs> what, 24 years old kids? Oh, my. Tim and I got into this conversation about insurance. I was sharing with them we couldn't get insurance for the church. And we were going through the whole ordeal as to why and how come and you know, everything just, uh, no one wants to cover us, no one wants to write a policy, you know, and uh, well, I had to go to the commissioner in Tallahassee, and, and I had a phone call with him, and, and then with uh, Kat, uh, our, our state representative, she got back with me and said, well, I handle federal cases, not state, and so, and that's local, so and then we got to another commissioner's office in Tallahassee, and I mean, this thing went on for three months. So I was telling Tim in a short story version, uh, between the appendix, uh, Appendix insurance and non-appendix, I think it's what it's called, or apprehend, whatever. And then from there you go higher up and, and all the different procedures and processes that uh, the office of, uh, commissioner's office in Tallahassee was giving me and, and everything and trying to get uh, insurance. And uh, it's just, it just amazing. So I wasn't, he, and he was too, and talking about our ins car insurance going up and our home insurance going up. And he was talking about it, I was talking about it, and never once did we thank God for the home we had. Never once did we thank God for the insurance that we do have right now. And the fact that, yeah, it's going to go up considerably. And, and then, of course, you know, and then the fact if you want to reduce it, you've got to reduce your deductible. 
I said, before long, our deductibles are going to be less more than what the house is worth, just to have insurance. And the same thing with automobile insurance. And so, you know, thinking about where, where did thanks or praise come from, uh, even in just that. And, you know, we don't, you don't plan that, and we didn't purposely look at it that way. But just again, we just got so caught up in that, and here we are at the Thanksgiving dinner table trying to give thanks, and we're not thanking God for the insurance that we do have and the coverage we have, whether it's good or bad or not so good or whatever. And, and we just, both of us came to the conclusion, if anything happens, we're simply just going to call Dan Newland or Morgan and Morgan. And, uh, you know, so we laughed about that, and... Uh, you know, that's what my agent, we were talking about our agents and everything, and I said, wow, you know, nice depressing lunch. <laughs> but again, you see, if we'd have given thanks, we'd have had a more smile on our face, and we'd been happier, and you will too. You take time out and say, pause, time out, hold on a minute here. Let's, let's give God some praise. Let's give God some thanks for what we do have and not what we don't have. See, it was hard to, not, it was hard to thank God that we didn't have insurance. It was hard to thank God that we couldn't find anybody to insure us. You know, and rather than thanking him and praising him and letting him handle it, and sooner or later, uh, that would work out for us. And uh, eventually it did as far as uh, some of the uh, policy we have on, on our liability. And so we praise God for that. But, I mean, there's just a, fi- a, a prime example. All right, so th- what's another way we can uh, give thanks that we're commanded to be continually? Not only with our lives, but what about our livelihood, how we live? Every day our livelihood Look what it says in Hebrews 13, 6. We're back in Hebrews again in verse 16. We just read verse 15. It says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. To communicate, forget not. The word communicate means there, to do good means to express. And to communicate here has to do with giving and and giving. So express our giving with thanksgiving and forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So he's talking about our, our giving and, 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 and our lives of expressing in our giving, our expressing of in thanksgiving, because God is well pleased with our sacrifices. And so I trust we're giving God a sacrifice and being grateful and thankful for it. Philippians 4.15, Paul says, Now, present tense, ye Philippians know also, all right? He wants you to know something, that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, he said, no church communicated with me. See, there's that same word in Hebrews, no church gave to me. That's what the word means there. No one was giving. No one gave to me. No one was helping me along the way in missions or so forth with me as concerning giving and receiving. Receiving. You see, so what's communicated to do? Well, let the Scripture interpret it. I departed from Macedonia. No church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Philippi, the church of Philippi, out of their strict poverty, uh, was, ta- was taking on Paul for support as a missionary. And so, you know, so they were supporting him with their livelihood. Everyone in here has a livelihood. Whether we're working a full-time job or a part-time job or, uh, you know, we're, we're living off of uh, Social Security, we're living off of uh, retirement pensions or investments that we've made, whatever is giving us a return, uh, that's our livelihood, that's what we've earned, that's our livelihood. And Paul says we're to sacrifice and communicate in giving with our livelihood. And, and that's how we give thanks uh, to God is through our giving and through our sacrifices. And so we do it with our lips and we do it with our livelihood. And again, it's a command for thanksgiving is to be continual. So there are two ways, and there are other ways, of course, but just wanted to give you two here from the Scriptures. And so we learned that the command for thanksgiving is to be continually, and it's to be unconditional. It's to be unconditional. First of all, the number of reason why it's unconditional because it's an imperative command. Folks, when the Bible gives us a command, it's unconditional. It's, it's not an option. It's not a suggestion. Well, it'd be okay if you want to do this. It'd be nice if you do. And it's okay. You do. You don't. It's all right. You know, whatever you want to do. It's your choice. You're, whatever you want. No, God has given us a, an unconditional a command in this thing of thanksgiving and giving. And it's an imperative command. Now, I, I love what this uh, theologian said here, uh, this Henry Beecher here. He says, a quote, a proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he never thinks he gets as much as he deserves. 
Let's read it again. Because I've been around a lot of people like that. I don't care what you do, what you give, how much, when, where. There's never a word of thanks. There's never a word of giving thanks or thanking, no matter what it is, how it was given. And then there are some that can't stop thanking you. But most of the time, there are those that don't. And when I found this quote here, I said, wow, uh, that's right. A proud man. You see, when someone can't give thanks for you doing something or giving something for them, that's pride. They're prideful, and what he says is because they think they didn't get as much as they think they deserved. Well, that job I did or that the deed I did or whatever I did, man, I deserved a whole lot more than that. You know, I worked a whole year for the boss, and look, what I, and look at this bonus I got. I got a, a hen instead of a turkey. Or I got a turkey, but it was only a six-pounder instead of a 16 or 26-pounder. You know, unthankful, ungrateful. Uh, a boss, a bonus, uh, uh, you, 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 you were a good salesperson, you made the company multi-hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions of dollars, and Christmas comes around and you get your bonus check, uh, uh, your choice of Publix of a, a spiral ham or a turkey, and you may have a $100 bill in it, and that person can't thank the company or the boss for the turkey or the $100 bill because they thought they deserved a whole lot more. Now, I'll grant you, folks, there are times when we do a lot, and, and people do a lot, and work hard, and do a lot, and certainly what is given, uh, certainly would in the reality of it, or in the norm, you might say, or, uh, you know, it, it was definitely worth more, no doubt it was worth more than what you were given. But a lot of times, the, the, the corporation, the company, the person, couldn't give any more than they gave. And they gave all they could give. And sometimes they can give more. And they didn't. But it's, that's their choice. The boss, the company, whatever. But our responsibility is to give thanks. And it's sad when, when people, especially Christians and brothers and sisters in Christ and so forth, are given things by other people. Uh, there's never a, a thank you or a thanks for it. <coughs> It's like it's unappreciated or they didn't appreciate it. And it's like a lot, of the, a lot of the work that goes on around here. And it's done around here. Sometimes no one here ever hears of anyone giving a thanks or praise or appreciation of it. And uh, certainly we don't expect it. And they don't expect it, but it certainly wouldn't hurt and so forth. And then there are gifts that are given and you gave gifts to your family. Your family ever give your family member a gift and never heard from them? Never thank you, never a card? It's like, hey, well, you know, I'm your kid or I'm your grandkid or whatever. I deserve this. You know, you ought to give this to me. Or is that all you're going to give me, Grandpa? That's, that's it? My goodness, you, you know? And they're just uh, uh, ungrateful. And uh, again, it's, 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 it's thankfulness and being thankful is unconditional. It's an imperative command, and we need to be careful that when someone does something for us or gives something to us, regardless of what it is or the amount, you need to have a grateful and thankful heart. Have the right attitude. Not that, well, I deserve more. If you'd had to pay somebody to do this, it would have cost ten times more. Well, do you ever stop to think the reason why we asked you to do it because we didn't have the ten times more to pay for it? That's the way it is around the church here. Everybody, a lot of people are always saying, well, why don't you hire somebody? Yeah, who's going to pay for it? You know, who's going to take care of the yard and the property out here? Why don't you hire a yard person? Well, we did. We had 12 bids. The lowest bid was 1600 a month. The highest was 26 Somebody want to pay 2600 a month to do the lawn? Hey, I'm all for it. God bless you. Thank you. Well, I mean, things like that. And, 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 just, uh, and, and if you're given something, somebody in the church here may give you something this season at Christmas time. Be grateful for it. Be thankful for it. Appreciate it. Because you never know what, what they're going through or what their finances are, what their contributions are. And they, they may be sacrificing, giving something that uh, they can't even give, but yet they do it because they love you, appreciate you, and they want to just say thank you. And you receive it with good thanksgiving and be grateful and thankful for it. And, and that goes for all of you that give to the ministries of this church. 
You know, I don't know what you give or don't give. I don't keep records, I don't ask, I don't look at the books and so forth. But I am grateful and thankful for what you give. And I know some of our folks here give out of poverty. They really do. And I am grateful for that and thankful for that. And I know some give when they don't have it. I know some want to give after we've given them something. They turn right around and want to give it back to the church because that's where their heart is. And, you know, I'm grateful for that, but uh, we don't allow that. When we give it to you, it's yours. Now, after you go home with it and, and look at it for a while, keep it in your drawer and hidden in your sock, then two weeks later you want to give it to the Lord. Well, that's your business, you know, and whatever God lays on your heart. But don't rob the church of being a blessing to you. And, and just like when any of us, if someone gives us something, don't sit there and say, no, I don't want it, I don't need it, and maybe we don't need it. But they want to, out of the blessing of their heart, they want to be a blessing to you and give you something. And don't rob them of their blessing, because God will bless them for it. And, and just be gracious and kind and thankful for it. And uh, say, wow, I mean, that's it? Wow, my goodness. If they had done this or had to do this or do this or that, it would cost. No, please don't take that attitude. Now, I'll go, I'm going to take and stretch a little further for some of you, even though she's, not, she's on the giving part of it and receiving. All right? I love it when people come up to me and say, Pastor, Pastor, God laid this on my heart to do this. And they start saying, so now you need to do this and do that. And I go, well, wait a minute. No, no. God laid that on your heart to do that. You need to do it. I haven't heard from heaven on that yet. I didn't get a phone call last night. You know, the Spirit didn't speak to me. God laid that on your heart for you to do it. You need to do it. But all that just, oh, that gets me because they always, oh, they come up with all these great, wonderful things and ideas. But God laid it on my heart to do this and to do that. I said, okay, he laid it on your heart to do this and do this. Get going. Get doing it. <laughs> he didn't lay it on my heart. And so, yeah. so hey, let's, 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 let's do it unconditionally. It's an imperative command. And then it's a constant command. Not only is it continual, uh, not only is it unconditional, but it's a constant command. It's in the present tense. You know, always. We're to be always. Uh, A.W. Tozer, I don't know if you're sure of A.W. Tozer. He's got some great books, great theologian. Uh, gratitude is an, offering, uh, is an offering precious in the sight of God. And it is one of the poorest of us can make and be not poor, but richer for having made it. Okay, it's a constant command to be giving thanks. We're talking about giving thanks. Okay, it's a command. It's to be continual. It's to be unconditional. And it's to be constant. Let's read a, a couple of verses here. Our brother James says, now here you go. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So, and folks, every gift you and I have is a gift from God. It's a perfect gift, and it's come from above. Everything. Your finances, your materialism, your homes, your cars, uh, your dogs, your cats, your birds, whatever you got. Now, if you got a snake pet, I don't know if that's a perfect gift from above. All right? I'll have to talk to the Lord about that one. You know, but, uh, you know, I don't want no snakes. Okay, amen. And, uh, and, and none of those wonderful creatures that have been around for a few billion years, even though the earth hasn't, but the creatures have been around. Uh, cockroaches. Uh, they're going to be with us for eternity, I'm telling you, man. And then, so Miss Eden, she likes cockroaches. So you can always bring a cockroach to Miss Eden for a gift. And she likes the big ones that fly. And so she, you know, she, the, which I believe they call them palmetto bugs, the, the big ones, the flyers, man, the bombers. They fly through the house at night, boom, hit the wall, you know, <laughs> crash. Amen. But folks, every gift you have, so let's quit complaining about what we have. If God is sovereign and in control, which he is, then everything we have, the car you have, the house you have, you're welcome to them. I'll bring them tonight. All right. It is far more important to pray with a sense of the gratefulness or the greatness of God than with a sense of greatness, greatness of the problem. Okay? Psalms 145, 3 and 4. Great is the Lord. How many believe he's great? Amen. And greatly is to be, what? Praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Okay? Our one generation shall praise thy works to another, and they shall declare thy mighty acts. So it's our responsibility as our generation, church, to be praising the Lord and his mighty acts to our kids and then our grandkids, generation to generation. 
All right, James 1, 2 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations or trials or testings of uh, various kinds. Ephesians 5, 20, giving thanks, how often, church? Always for what? For all things unto who? God and the Father, and how are we to do it? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're to pray to the Father through the Son. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, our Father. See, we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And we pray to the Father through Jesus' name. And so uh, it's a constant command of this thing of giving thanks. And yet, I know like you and me, we all fail sometimes in that miserably. Thir secondly, and only two points in this today. Secondly, the consolation of thanksgiving. The consolation of thanksgiving. Notice what the verse said in there that we read in 518. It said in there what? In everything, how many things? Everything. It's an imperative command. Give what? Thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The consolation of thanksgiving. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And by the way, here, so let's take a look at this according to the will of God. A lot of people always want to come and say, I, I, what's the will of God? How do I know the will of God? Well, there's a lot of it in the Scripture. Just read the Bible. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll know the will of God already. But there's some of it. But in this area of talking about giving thanks, you and I will know that you and I are, in, are, are living in the will of God when we are giving thanks in everything. When you're giving thanks to God in and for everything, you're going to know you're living in the will of God. Are, are you with me now? You are, you, when you are giving thanks, okay, and when, you, and when you and I get right with God, you will give thanks to the Lord. See, when we're not giving thanks, we're not right with God. Because if we're not giving thanks, what are we doing? Well, we're being unthankful or ungrateful or moaning, groaning, complaining, a belly aching, whining, fussing. Aren't you going to be glad when we get to heaven? Yes. There won't be no more of that. We won't be doing it anymore. We'll have a perfect body, perfect mind of Christ. It'll be fantastic. Until then, unfortunately, we have to deal with this old flesh we live in. And sometimes it gets the best of us, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, sister. I'm glad people are honest. Amen. Might as well. God knows it. Holy Spirit knows it. So, and you know it, so might as well just admit it, right? Uh, we, just, we have to deal with the flesh. Paul said that. We, we constantly fight this battle of the flesh. And uh, sooner or later we won't. But hey... You want to know, Pastor, what's the will of God for my life? How do I know if I'm willing in the, in the living in the will of God? Are you giving God thanks in everything? Are you giving God thanks in everything all day, every day? Amen. Then you're living in the will of God. Now, there's a whole lot more of willing in the will of God, of course. We know that. But right now, we're talking about the subject of thanks, of giving thanks. Psalms 107, verse 2. Now, we're going to be in Psalms this morning. And we're going to be in this psalm right here this morning as we close out our, our month of thanksgiving and giving thanks. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I won't comment on that now. I'll save it for this morning because we're going to be looking at Psalms 107. Okay? So there, living in God's will when you and I are continually, constantly, uh, you know, giving thanks and being grateful and thankful, then we know we're living in the will of God. How about, here's the second one, one more, we're done. You and I are going to know when, 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 uh, when your will, uh, when you are, your will, when you are living in Christ likeness. You're going to know you're living in the will of God when you're living in Christ likeness. The Lord's Supper. Go ahead and read my writing there for a minute. Living in, uh, living, uh, you and I, we're in the will of God when we're living in Christ's likeness. That is, when you and I are thankful. How many of you remember the Lord's Supper? You remember when he had the Lord's Supper? And the Bible says he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and distributed it. Okay. See, when you and I are, have given thanks and are giving thanks, then we're living in Christ's likeness because Jesus thanked God for the bread and the wine. And several other times, he says, I thank thee, Father, that thou hearest me. I thank thee, Father, that thou that, that hearest me and knowest and so forth. He did that with Lazarus when he raised Lazarus. Remember? 
He went up to Lazarus' tomb and he turned around and he did it in front of all the people. And he lifted up his eyes towards heaven. He says, I thank thee, Father, that thou hearest me. And knowest and so forth and so on. And he did it for the sake of the people, that the people would see an open testimony that even the Lord was thanking God for what he was about to do. Then he turned around and said, roll the stone away, fellas. Oh, huh, what? Don't you understand? He's been dead four days. And he stinks. Roll the stone away. Oh, hey, nevertheless, we'll do it. Lazarus, come on out of there, boy. Good thing he called him by neighbor. By the grave would have got up and walked out. <laughs> Lazarus comes out, mommy clothes, loose him. Let him go. And that night Jesus had supper at Lazarus' home. And all the town came out and gathered around his house. How would you like that? He's sitting there eating dinner and everybody looking through your windows at you. Is that Lazarus? Hey, hey, is that Lazarus? Yeah, yeah, let me see, let me see. Let me see, my turn, let me see. He's in there eating with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Psalms 104 and 5 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And our unspeakable gift that God gave to us was the Lord Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that gift and birthday here this next month as we move into December. So it's going to be a wonderful time as we get ready. Don't forget tonight. Now I know we're finished. We're closing our Bibles and we're getting ready to change seats and all that. And we've already forgotten to be thankful. Isn't that amazing? Because that's how our wonderful minds work. But I got some Christmas tracks up here. We made up for you, and if uh, they're here on the table, there's about a hundred of them. Don't take all of them. Be kind and generous and be sharing. Okay, and it says here, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and has the plan of salvation in it. It's a beautiful Christmas track. And we have some up here for you. We make these up every year. And inside is how to get to heaven, the fact check. Not fat, but fact. And uh, on the back, it's our church and gives us all of our TV, radio, uh, live streaming stuff there on there, information down at the bottom, and uh, address and everything and so forth. So these are our Christmas tracks. So if you're going out and shopping and restaurants, eating, give them a Christmas track. And it'll be pretty and you'll enjoy them. All right, so we got to go. Father, thank you for this lesson this morning now. Lord, we, uh, we, uh, we prayed and asked for understanding. So we know your Holy Spirit gave us understanding this morning. We've asked him to give us wisdom how to apply that. We thank you that he's given us the wisdom. And so now we need to apply it in and through in our lives. And that is to be thankful, grateful, and to give thanks in everything, in all ways, no matter what. And we thank you and we praise you for it now. That's our service now. Give folks traveling mercies as they come as we prepare for the morning service. In Jesus' name, amen.